Good evening and welcome to Garage Geek Friday Night Chats. Hope everyone had a great week. I had a really nice week because, as I mentioned in one of my most recent videos, I had Wednesday off and that was so cool. It was so nice to have Wednesday off. And then uh, it was library day today. So after about 30 minutes of each class, I'm, I'm able to walk down with my class to the library and I kind of get to take a back seat uh, the librarian does a presentation and then the kids look for books so of course i'm walking around and monitoring them but it's a, a much easier day whenever we go to the library so that 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 was a great way to end this week so you have garage geek in a well rested mode uh ready to uh to go oh, i also want to uh mention so i don't forget tomorrow is my live stream and i actually just finished the stephen king book right before this uh because I I did uh, I use this as double duty, so I um, I'm determined to read one book per week from the books that I've bought, and I use this uh, as my book for this week, and um, also for the live stream that I'm having tomorrow. And so I I won't be discussing this uh, tonight, but this is a book that I did read uh, this week, and I just absolutely love that hand. And I love that cover art. Probably you, most of you like that. I don't know why I'm drawn to that hand. I think that hand is so beautifully done. And I mean, just everything about this cover is great. So tune in tomorrow if you want to know more about that hand. So I have about seven movies to go over with you. Two shows, two books. And I, um, I found out this morning after I got to work that um somebody that i really like and admire uh, michael pinder died so this is michael pinder's album the promise so michael pinder was a member of the uh, was a member of the moody blues and um this you know this is an album that i i grew up listening to a lot because my uh, older brother played it all the time so this is kind of one of those albums that kind of was ingrained in me and um of course I have, have the album. Mine is kind of beat up. It's even uh, coming through. I don't know if you can see, but there's even a little seam split here and the album pops out. So here is the, the gatefold. Um, it's very much hippie stuff. I, I don't care. I love it. I think I'm a hippie at heart. I, I like believe a lot of the stuff that, he, that hippies do. I don't know if that makes you want to throw rocks at me or what, but just another layer of Grod Geek that you probably already knew, but yeah, I, I'm kind of into hippie stuff. And um, oh look, his face is coming out of the of Stonehenge. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is just an album that I treasure. It, this one is an album that I've had a long time. It's all beat up. Um, I think it's okay to have some beat up albums in your library. It's kind of like represent which albums that you really, really love and cherish. This is probably a dollar album or or whatnot i mean you could probably get this very cheap uh but to me it's an important piece in my collection because i i cherish it so much i love every song on it so much so that i actually have this this is actually one of the first cardboard sleeve uh cds i have i think i'm, I'm not quite sure about that and i think this was put out by um a small company one step records and they they have three of his albums unfortunately i only have this one i don't have these uh but it's got this slip case right and this it's really interesting because there's a perforated line like i don't know if you could see it but there's a perforated line here and you could actually fold this up this is all perforated too i'm not gonna undo it but inside is basically promotion for stuff that the for more Michael Pinder stuff that you could get, but there's absolutely no way I'm ever going to be ripping that apart. And then there is the the actual album itself. It unfolds as a try and a half fold. I mean, there it's three, and then it's got this little extra flap. And the, the CD goes right here. And yeah, some... Just that's the back, some photos and stuff. Like I said, very hippie stuff. I absolutely love it. Um, and then 
this i guess was from japan i don't know if i actually bought this in japan i can't remember when i bought it most likely i did um but you know you could see that it says mike pinder uh paramisu so you know my japanese isn't that great but you know this is easy to read because you know it's pretty much a uh, letter for letter unlike this stuff which has you know you have to know specific, uh, you have to know the symbols, right? How to say them, you can't guess. Like, these are just letters, if you know what I mean. Like, that's M-I. No, this is, yeah, M-I-K-U. I guess that is Ma. Oh, it's Ma-I-K-U. I... <laughs> it's M-A-I-K-U. That's how it's done. Yeah, I'm rusty on my uh, Japanese. But there you go. So I've been just kind of rambling on about Michael Pinder. Um, I, I listened to this album today uh, at work a little bit. I didn't have time. Oh, yeah, I did. I actually listened to the whole album. Then it started another one of his. And I could tell there was a change because the, the, the next one was later in his career. But I was actually enjoying it. So I'm, I'm definitely going to listen to more of him. Yeah, and it's unfortunate because this is as far as I got in his solo career. I've never really listened to much else because this is the one that I grew up on. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to have to put some tape here or something because, yeah, the, right here the record keeps peeping through. Although if I put this in plastic, that should help. So enough about Michael Pinder. Um, for me, you know, I, I, I didn't really research it, but I guess... Um, the YouTuber that I found out, he responded to me and he said, well, well, yeah, uh, I guess he was uh, quite old when he died. So I, I don't know how old he was. Um, I need to investigate. But um, I'm certainly, uh, I don't know if I could say miss him. Like he's not someone I like, listen to all the time. But the Moody Blues is just one of those groups that I grew up on. And um, for me, it's kind of just a shame, you know, of course, when anyone dies, but it's just a shame. Uh, when you hear about that. So if you've never heard this and um, if you like the Moody Blues, this is very, very similar. I think he was responsible for a lot of the Moody Blues sound. So when you put this on, it sounds like a Moody Blues record. Um, but yeah, so if you like the Moody Blues, you might like this and just be aware you're going to be in for some hippie lyrics, which I actually, you know, about love, peace and understanding. But <laughs> I dig that stuff. I think that's what the world needs. So Hey, maybe I, we already have Happy Hippie, the vinyl guy, so I can't be a uh, garage hippie. All right, let me go ahead and put Michael Pinder to the side. But um, I thank you, Michael Pinder, for all the wonderful music you've, you've given uh, that has enriched my life. I stopped at the book drop this morning because it looked pretty full. So I went in and I found uh, this book, Sophocles' Ass, I ass, <laughs> but I I guess it's just the Ajax I ass. And so, um, I was very curious, and so this is uh, the Greek tragedy in new translation series, and I actually started reading this because I was curious, and it is a very modern translation, and it really flows. Now, what's really interesting is you know what yeah, I've read you know, all of these things in college, and I pick up uh, these old books in Penguin penguin translations, you know, off and on. And you kind of like them because of the stilted style, because, it, you know, it just sounds like you're reading something ancient. But, you know, reading something like this, where it's very modern and it flows, it was just refreshing. And I only read like three pages of this, or more like six. And I was totally into it. Like I can't wait to keep reading this. And they put out a whole series of these, and they have collected editions. So just picking this up out of the book drop, you know, got me into a tangent because that's how my brain is. And um, this is really, really good. I'm I'm highly recommending it. If you in, enjoy, um, you know, classic literature. Uh, but this is really easy to get through because it's, you know, it flows so well in a uh, modern tongue. So maybe I should read the Bible in a modern uh, translation, like an updated uh, version. I, I bet that might, I, it might be a lot of fun to do that. I don't know. I mean, if reading the Bible is ever fun. And then I also picked up this. Now I have another copy of this and this book is gigantic, but I loved this cover art. I just thought, 
Look, there's a Garage Geek right there. Um, I just, I love that chalk. I, it looks to me like, no, colored pencil. <laughs> colored pencil art. Um, yeah, I just, I can I make that the same size? Yeah. Um, I don't know. And maybe it's a sign that I, I kind of need to read this again. I read this thing so long ago. Uh, it, it would be fun to read this, I, I wonder. Yeah, and it's also a new translation. So whoever was dropping these things off, I wish they dropped off more because um, they were into like modern translations of things. So, uh, or maybe they were in a college class and they had to read that. Oh, my dog's going to come over and come on, honey. He's going to knock over my coffee. Come on, come on. You can lay down with me. There you go, baby. My other dog, Angel... He's taken to staying in the kitchen. He likes to be in the kitchen by himself. And I, I'm i kind of sad because I want him out in the garage with me, but it's what he likes. He stays in there um, a few hours, and then later he likes to come back out again. So that dog's neurotic. Okay, movies. Um, The first one, I'm going to kind of go in order, by the way, I watched them. So the first one, uh, my husband and I were going to watch a show. And he he was in the movie in the mood to watch a full movie, and I said, "Oh, look at this gay movie! It looks fun. We should watch it sometime." And he really likes gay movies, so uh, we went ahead and just he's like, "No, put it on. I want to watch it." So I was like, "Okay, uh, let me go ahead and get my photos." Now he was regretting that at the end because he was like, he looked at me. He was like, "It's one of your movies," because I thought it was a comedy. I mean, it's got Marissa Tomei in it, and I mean, it just kind of looks like an oddball comedy. Nope, this movie was heavy and it was sad and wow, did I love it. First of all, look at the actors in this. It's got John Lithgow, Alfred Molina, and Marissa Tomei. I absolutely love Marissa Tomei and both of these actors. And wow, was this movie good. So this is about two um, men who decide to have a marriage ceremony after being together for, I don't know how many years, like a long time. And as a result of that public marriage, because pictures were posted on Facebook and whatnot, even though the place where he worked knew that he was gay, um, it was in the contract that uh, that would go against their morals clause. And so he was um, fired and they live in New York City. And because of that, it put a strain on their relationship. They couldn't afford uh the apartment that they were in anymore and so friends step in to help them but in order to stay in new york city they have to split up and they're on different uh, sides of the city and it really really takes a toll on uh their relationship but it's it's a movie about like you know going through adversity and you know still clinging to what is important to you and I can't recommend this movie highly enough. Man, was I shocked, at, first of all, that it wasn't a comedy. And then it it was so heavy. So I, my husband, he actually really liked it. But he was like, oh, it was one of your movies. You knew it, didn't you? I was like, no, I thought it was a comedy. I really did. Because I, I don't know why, but maybe because Mr. Tomei is in a lot of comedies like... um. Uh, my Cousin Vinny and, and stuff like that. I mean, she's not just a comedic actress, but um, she's... Oh, man. <clears throat> that reminds me. God, was he in that movie, too? The... Oh, he was in that movie. The one with Marissa Tomei where um, she's married to the son. And I think she's responsible for the son's death. And Oh, what was that movie? Man, that's a good movie. Okay, here's Garage Geek going off on a tangent again. It was, uh, I forget what it was called, like in the bedroom or, or something like that. That was a good movie too, okay? <laughs> I need to stick to my list because anytime I have to think of something off script, it goes bad for Garage Geek. All right, so highly recommended. I give this five out of five, although it is low budget. Five out of five, amazing movie. Prepare to be depressed. But they were good. The acting was so good. Okay, next we're going to go to a movie that I watched. So, again, um, 
I have a bunch of movies in a in a in a box, and my husband gives me a number one to fifty. I pick it and I I watch it, and I got through three of them this week. So the first one is Charlton Heston's Arrowhead, and I think it was from nineteen fifty one, or oh no, sorry, nineteen fifty three. So this stars Charlton Heston and Jack Palance, and Jack Palance was scary as hell. He was so good in this role as an, uh, a Native American who was sent uh, to, a, 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 I guess, a white boarding school, and then he comes back as an adult, uh, ready to take over and, and uh, take back land and pride for his people. Now, this this movie is full of uh, bigotry. And uh, that was one of the things that they were saying online, that there was like, uh, this movie is centered around the idea of bigotry and hatred and that bigotry that fuels you. Um, it It's very negative in a lot of ways, but it's the backbone of this uh, story. And I mean, I, I enjoyed this movie. It's, it's not five stars by any means, but Jack Palance was so good. Like some of it's silly. Like there's this tacked on, uh, love affair. And then there's this, um, uh, Mexican girl. I think she's also a Mexican woman who's part Apache. And you know, the, any, any time somebody is half one thing or half another, it's not going to turn out well. Um, that was, that was kind of like iffy. I, th I wish that would have been, um, uh, flushed out a little bit more uh but i did enjoy this i i would have to recommend this as about 3.5 out of 5 uh but for a movie that i'd never seen um jack palance alone was worth watching man he was he was good in this role um so yeah there you go arrowhead so glad that i have that movie and that i watched it that's a keeper uh, next, I we watched Night Swim. So this is one that I uh, watched with my husband. You know, we enjoy uh, scary movies. And so this was a new movie that is on um, Peacock. So it's called Night Swim. And I'm going to have to say that this is just a run-of-the-mill uh, horror movie. It does have some really nice things. Um, one of my favorite parts is... Uh, so this is basically a haunted swimming pool. Um, I love scenes where people are like sucked under and like they're pulled in and when they look up they can see the bottom of the swimming pool but they're in this like other realm and it's all water and they're like being pulled away from that entry point into our reality uh i know that's happened for example in a freddy krueger movie um it's happened in numerous horror movies but that gets me every time i think that is so cool you know just seeing someone like full out in water reaching up toward that light and being pulled away from it i just i think that's you know a beautiful shot although it's horrifying uh but having said that there are a couple of jump scares that are good uh the makeup's good i mean it's just stuff that you've seen before so this is an enjoyable it's an enjoyable horror movie i'm not going to be like oh my god the best movie ever like megan uh, was way better than this one uh but it's enjoyable for you know, you know you know a friday night or whatever with some popcorn uh i would i don't i don't want to say three out of five um let's just say it's a middle of the road horror movie and um I'll, we'll leave it at that i mean it's it's not great it's not the best horror movie you're ever gonna watch um but if you have peacock you definitely should watch it uh, but, you know, don't expect the great things. Now, the next one I'm going to show you was probably the worst movie I've seen in so long. This is a movie that I'm going to put in a box of bad movies and just try to forget it and then pull it out every once in a while just to laugh at it. This is <laughs> Hostage Negotiator, and this was a totally made-for-TV movie um, the acting in, in most parts was pitiful. The, the music was like a really bad, you know, example of Terminator or something. Um, the, the situations were laughable. Like there's a husband in this 
and he's fine at the beginning of the movie and then he just goes totally crazy and starts kidnapping the kids and you know go going on like a bank robbing it, it just made no sense and by the middle of this movie, I was like so bored, but I, I just kept it going. So I was scrolling through my phone and it was just so bad. Um, so yeah, this is not a keeper. I'm going to say that this is a one or a 0. 0.5 out of um, five. And that this would be uh, a movie that would be fun to just like put on and make fun. of. <laughs> very, very bad, bad movie. Uh, so... Unfortunately, it's in my collection, but it's going to go off to the side. And I'm going to have a special new box just for like really, really bad movies. All right. The next one was King David. Not by Richard Gere. Uh, not by Richard Gere, but um, starring Richard Gere. So this one's out of the sleeve because I have to uh, I have to put a little, um, what do you call it? Like uh, cardboard backing to make it a little bit more thick. So... I as I watch this, so obviously this is a <clears throat> biblical movie about um, King David, right? Or David and Goliath guy. So I I started watching it and I was enjoying it, um, and like it was really bad because I like totally fell asleep in the middle of this movie, and it wasn't because it was bored. I was just so tired, so I, I had to turn it off and I just went to sleep. And I started uh, continued watching it the next day. My friend was laughing because she's like, yeah, if I were watching that movie, I'd fall asleep too. But it, it wasn't because it was boring. It was actually weirdly uh, entertaining. Now, when I researched this movie, I found that it was totally panned and it flopped. Um, what people did uh, praise was his performance. He was very good. But they were, they were saying that like he was totally miscast and... <clears throat> um, the director didn't want him at all, and uh, he was kind of forced to work with him because the studios picked him, and that kind of soured the whole production. I mean, it could have been. Um, but having said that, uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, I wouldn't say a lot, but for a flop, I just I did not think it was a horrible movie. It's certainly not like Hostage Negotiator. And this has Alice Krieg in it. And I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce her name. But I really... Oh, wait. Where is she? You can kind of see her on the disc right there. I don't know why, but I really like her. And if she's in something, I kind of like um, perk up my ears a little bit. I just... I really like her. And I know she's... Um, I would hate to say a B-movie actress. But she's kind of in like lower budget movies i don't know if that's unkind to say um but for some reason i thought i really like it when i see her and i i um um i'm glad that she was in this movie and she plays bath sheba and you know her first scene is like it's pretty funny because she's um she's like about two houses over and uh david is standing like looking down at her and she's just getting a full nude bath by like a, a servant woman and the servant woman, it looks gross because she, all she's doing is like rubbing oil on her. It's not a bath. It's like an oil bath. And the and um, Alice Krieg is just kind of like sitting there and David's like, like staring. And I mean, this scene goes on a long time. <laughs> and she keeps like rubbing the oil all over her breasts and everything. Um, and then they meet later. So she comes to the court and he's like, I've seen you. And she's like, yeah, <laughs> I know. It's really funny. Um, but one of the things that the director said that he wanted to do is he didn't want a, to make a, bli bli a biblical epic with all kinds of lights and choruses and, you know, like the holy light coming in and oh, that kind of thing. No, and he didn't. But I think it's to the detriment of this movie in some sense because... Um, there's something about biblical movies that play on the divine, right? And so that's kind of something that you need, uh, the miraculous. And to, to make the miraculous ordinary and strip it of all that power and glory, um, 
I don't know. I think even uh, Scorsese, he was trying to do that, make make Jesus seem a little bit more down to earth. But there were still those elements of the miraculous in the story that he told and in the film that he made. Uh, and so I think that might be part of the reason that this is not as successful as it could have been. Um, I, I'm kind of going on about this, but I, I did like this movie. Uh, it's just not as good as some of the biblical epics that I've seen. Um, so I would... I wouldn't highly highly recommend this movie i enjoyed it i would definitely give this at about a three to a 3.5 out of five it's an average movie but i'm i'm certainly glad i watched it next we've got two more and the next movie is part two of the rebel moon uh movie so this is a Zack snyder film this is part two this is on Netflix, Rebel Moon. Uh, I reviewed the first one, and it was basically an amalgamation of, of Star Wars and uh, Seven Samurai, and this continues it. And every time I see the ships in this movie, I just think Star Blazers. Now, I'm, I know um, in my recent video, I showed a Star Blazers album that I bought. It might be this one. Let me see if it is. It is. So every time I showed, uh, saw the ships in this movie, I just thought of these, uh, the ships in this uh, Japanese animation. And I, I'm, they must have been um, their inf uh, influence, uh, model, uh, what have you, for, for the ships in this, in this movie. Um, this movie is not great by any means, but if you enjoyed the first one, you will enjoy the second one. This has a lot of great special effects. This has the part of the movie where the whole village has to get together and fight against the, you know, the invading forces. So that's what we were waiting for in the first movie. That's the buildup in, in Seven Samurai. And so we get it in this movie. Uh, it's not over. There's some great, great special effects scenes. There's a scene where there's a ship going down like this and they're having a fight while it's going down um i remember there was a scene like that in the the new star trek movies uh there's a scene like that um oh it was the wrath of khan movie no well it's not called the wrath of khan movie it's um the second star trek movie that that uh was remade and you know as the ship's falling they're having a fight on on that scene uh on the on the ship there's a scene like that in this movie it was it was I wish it would have been longer, uh, but I enjoyed that. Um, it's I recommend it. This again, it's kind of forgettable sci-fi. That's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, it's certainly not boring. And then the final movie that I watched is What We Do in the Shadows, which is the movie that I'm going to be talking about in my show tomorrow. So um, this is the movie that the show is based upon and um i had seen it before a long time before the show and i was very happy to watch that again because now i'm kind of comparing um so yeah i'll be talking about that one tomorrow all right i saw two shows uh, i finished fallout and i won't give any spoilers for fallout because i know a lot of people are watching and a lot of people are enjoying it uh I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a fun ride. I actually watched five shows in a row because I was I was so into it. Um, yeah, I, I really recommend this show if you like science fiction. And then finally, we watched uh, Resident Alien Season 3. And this show, <clears throat> uh, it has its ups and downs. It's a TV show, right? And so... It, it did have its slow parts in the middle, and it does have a lot of silliness, but it's a comedy, so I, I kind of overlooked that. But the the characters really, really grow on you, and by the end, you really care more about the characters in the town than you actually do about the alien, and I think the show did a really good job in doing that. And um, it really ended also with a cliffhanger in a couple of instances, and it left me wanting more. So I, I'm going to say that uh, even though it has its ups and downs, I really am still enjoying the show. And I think each season kind of gets better. So those are the two shows that I saw. Um, 
Last, I'm going to talk about two books that I read, and they're both on the Booker list. So the f here's the, the, the list that I've been showing. So the, the blue ones are the ones that I've read, and the white ones are the ones that I still have to read. So I still have four to go, although I started House of Doors today, and it's like 13 hours, and I'm already like three or four hours into it. So I'll be reviewing that next week. So I listened to A Spell of Good Things, which was on the long list. And I listened to, finally, I listened to The Winner, which is Prophet Song. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about both of those books. So I'll start with A Spell of Good Things, which is, oh, before I forget, let me. I saw this. This was something funny I saw on Facebook. One day, I'll be a full-sized piece of shit. <laughs> and then, you already smell like one. Um, Silly Tiny Tales by Whitman. I don't know why, but I just thought that was worth a chuckle. So, I, I went ahead and wanted to show you that. Okay. A Spell of Good Things by Ayobami Adebayo. Of course, I'm probably not saying it correctly. So this, this book was a little bit hard to get into, but once I got into it, I thoroughly enjoyed it. This book was very divisive. The reviews online, some people really hated it. Said it was a run-of-the-mill uh, Nigerian novel. Many other African novels are much better than this one. Uh, I disagreed with that, although I haven't read a ton of Nigerian novels. I've read some. And I really enjoyed this. Now, this was a story about um, class in Nigeria. And it looked at two families, uh, one wealthy and one poor. And near the end of the book, they, they intersect. And people were um, screaming because they wanted it to intersect sooner. And that when it did intersect, it wasn't satisfying, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't want to you know, give a lot of spoilers. Um, but yeah, it, you know, th there are, there are some scenes in this book that are just, they're so sad. Like there's, uh, there's a, a young boy and a girl and every day that they go to school, they get beaten in front of, uh, their class and they come home with all these bruises. Why? Because they can't pay the school fees. And every day they're going to school in dread of getting beaten. And the, f the family can't afford to pay the fees that the, the father got, um, he got fired because uh, the, the government was changing and they didn't think that history should be on the curriculum. And so they just fired all the history teachers. And so he kind of just turns his face to the wall and he gives up. And the wife in the family is left to fend for everybody in the family. And um, the two kids, you know, they can't afford to pay the rent. They can't afford to pay the school fees. They can't afford this, that, and the other thing. Um, there's just, there's so much going on in this novel. And then when we go to the rich uh, people, you know, they similarly have really difficult uh, problems that they have to deal with that goes along with culture and, and class. So there's a woman who's going to get married to a childhood uh, a friend and she really loves him, but he's got a dark side. And as they get closer and closer to marriage, like he's hitting her more and more often. But because she's a little bit older, uh, she really has no recourse because the whole family has already, you know, in the whole community, they already know about the marriage. And it would be like a big shame if she were to back out. And um, even though they know that she she's being beaten and even the family of the the abuser knows and it just it's really you know uh it's harrowing to read all of these things so i know i'm kind of spoiling a little bit but there's a lot more to this book so i i really think that this this book really kind of opens your eyes to you know societal injustices with you know systems of government and class and and all these kind of things and um uh I ended up really, really enjoying this book. Um, I'm glad I stuck through it because at the beginning I was having difficulty with it. But once I got into the rhythm of it, of it I, I really did enjoy it. So uh, a spell of good things. 
Uh, I do think it deserved to stay on the long list, though. Um, it, it didn't make it to the second round, uh, which... Let me see, where is that? Sorry. Um, like here, I showed you. So it's it's down here, right? It didn't make it to the, to the short list. Um, and I agree with that. Although I did really enjoy the book. And then... Oh, here's a here's a picture from that movie, uh, Hostage Negotiator. <laughs> that was the 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 scene when you have to click, like in the what do you call it, the the play screen, or you know when you put in it's a DVD, right? So where you have to make the scene selection or whatever. So that's that's what came up. And the next movie that I, I mean, the next book that I'm going to talk about, the final one is where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, I can't find it. It's Prophet Song. Didn't I didn't I get a picture? Oh, sorry, I didn't get a picture of it. So I'm gonna look it up while I talk about this. So this is the winner of the Booker Prize. And so many people did not like this book. Prophet Song. Now I listened to this book, and after I did. It's actually got pretty cool art. So I listened to this book, and after I did, um, I found out that there there was a lot of people who actually disliked the reading experience. Why? Because this person kind of jumbled uh, paragraphs together without punctuation and huge blocks of text. He didn't want to make paragraphs. So it's like like you're looking at a wall of text. Now, I didn't realize that because as I listened to it, it all flowed because the, you know, the, the person who was reading it had, um, was really good at reading the text. And so the whole thing flowed. It was from, it wasn't, it wasn't first person point of view, but it was third person point of view, but from the character of a woman whose husband is accused of being against the government in Northern Ireland. And what happens is you have a slow descent into tyranny. So the government takes over little by little and strips away people's rights. Now, what some people disliked about this book is that the author said that he wanted to take what was going, in, going on in places like... Um, uh, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the name of the country. Syria? Oh my gosh, I'm feeling stupid right now. But anyways, so the the country were, which is having um, a war with Russia right now. Oh my God, I feel so bad right now but, because I can't remember the name of the country. But he wanted to take the what was going on there. And since he didn't really know people, he wanted to place it where he knew and he wanted to give it a voice of his own but he also wanted to show their struggles and people online were very angry because they're like well why don't you just research some real person's struggle and and present real um issues that are going on instead of fabricating it yourself um i don't know i, I to me it seems like well writers could do that or they could also give their own voice and then some people were saying you know there's there's other books written with firsthand testimony from people who have gone through these things. So why read this when you could just read something, um, you know, that really happened? Again, I see that argument, but this is different. This is a fictionalized account of, of a woman that, uh, you know, a skilled writer is, you know, portraying this character. And we see her slowly being stripped away of of the things that are important in her life. Um, one by one, members of her family are taken away, and a couple of them, uh, at least two of them, are taken away. One by the by the government, uh, well, actually two, and another one decides to join a rebel force. Uh, but you know, they just don't know where they've gone, and no matter where they go to ask questions, they're always being turned away, and they're basically being told, if you don't stop, maybe we'll make you disappear as well. And then there's this constant struggle to try to find food and take care of her elderly father. And um, she, her thoughts and everything that she has to go through is, I think, expertly laid out for us. And we follow her into this journey, into this descent. 
um, into a society, you know, where honestly this could happen anywhere, where things are slowly taken away. And a question arises like, she's given the opportunity to get out and she doesn't take it. And she thinks about that later, um, like, you know, some not everyone who's given a chance to leave actually does leave. And we look back and we say, well, that was stupid. Why didn't you just get out when you could? And she lays out her reasons why. And then we look back and say, well, you should have just left. But when things are happening in degrees and you're kind of like, it's like the, the frog that's in the boiling pot, right? You're kind of just getting used to it and you just keep, you know, putting up with it and putting up with it. It's not like it happens overnight and you decide, well, we got, we got to get out of here. But no, it's like little by little, something's taken away little by little. And so uh, I really enjoyed this book for what it did now. I actually think I need to buy a physical copy and read it because I need to experience uh, what the writer did with the text because he's supposed to be showing you her uh, thoughts and feelings as they as she gets more and more frantic and uh, jumbled and her life becomes more and more messy and chaotic. The prose is slowly being becoming more chaotic as it uh, like flows across the page without any paragraph breaks or punctuation. Um, People like people say they they understood it, but it was just such a barrier to to reading that it wasn't a pleasurable experience. So now that I read it and I really enjoyed it, I would actually like to get a physical copy and read through some of that and and see what that's like. Um, so that's it. There's Garage Geek. I went through like seven movies, two shows, two books. Talked about uh, Michael Pinder. And don't forget that tomorrow I have my live show and that's going to be happening happening at 10 in the morning. So if you can join me, you can. If not, then see it in the reruns. And like always, I want to thank you all for the support. And I want to remind you all to make sure that you be more. And I can never remember that. And you, I need to make sure that you be more intelligent.